is none other than Terry Ghani and Terry shares his journey of recovery to help us understand the awesome power of infinite thinking and how we can shift ourselves and your organization towards abundance with this mindset. He calls this the awesome art of being human. And today, that's why he's going to be speaking about the awesome power of infinite thinking. So let's put our heads together and welcome Terry Gunny. That's right. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Hey, guys. One small little thing I want to get you guys to do, because I think you ate a lot of this wonderful spring rolls outside, which... By the way, when you guys weren't noticing, I actually went out and ate earlier and had four of them. They are so good. So before we start, I just want you to do one wonderful thing, which is basically to take that one item that you love so much, that one item that you spend your days with. As a matter of fact, you spend days more with that item even before you see your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and that's your mobile phone. You communicate with it every day. You want to kiss it? You want to go to sleep with it? So please, humor me. Take your phone in your left hand. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. Excellent. Use your right hand. Clasp the phone. Yeah. Great. Now lean to the left. Oh, as much as you can. Lean to the right. Oh, as much as you can. Lean to the back. Ooh. Ooh. And to the front. Mm. And then give it a little kiss. Switch it off. Mute it and put it on the table. Wonderful. What a compliant audience. I love this. <laughs> right, this is not an evil laugh. Oh, sorry, was that meant to be a right laugh? No. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, the topic I'm talking about is exciting because it's very close to my heart. It is so close to my heart that it will resonate with most of you. i tell you why. It's called the awesome power of infinite thinking. You know, yesterday I spent the whole day listening to you guys, and this morning as well. Amazing speakers, all of you. Absolutely amazing speakers. One thing I noticed is that you guys were raw, absolutely raw. There were people like Rizal, who talked about being literally on the precipice of saying goodbye to everything. Yeah? So many. This man here, Vara, my good friend, you know, you talked about giving up a huge opportunity to probably retire a millionaire. Probably you're a millionaire now, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but the point is, all these opportunities, what did we do? We did it because we pursued our career all the time. And this is what we're here for, right? So infinite thinking to me is so important for all of us. But the beauty of it all is, a lot of you are already practicing it. A lot, yeah? So here is, a lot of people ask me, so tell me, what is it you do? You go around wearing a Panama all the time? Well, yes, it's because I've got a cool head and try to keep it warm, right? <laughs> but at the same time, when I'm in the UK, which I live half my life, I have to keep it literally warm, yeah? So people say, what is a humanitarian evangelist? What does that mean? Well, if you trace my life back, I've been through these amazing challenges that usually would destroy most people. And I'm not saying that I'm so incredible that I can survive. No, I'm just a very normal human being. The only difference with me and the rest of you is I allow myself to share with the rest of the world. And that gives you permission to also be vulnerable and authentic. And that's what we're here for as speakers. That's so critical. Yeah. I also was invited to speak on TED Talk, which was exciting, except you know, when we look at technology, right at the beginning we had three hours ahead to you know, try everything into the sound check and all that. And I got on stage, everything went zero. Okay, including sound. And if you watch the TED talk, the audio is actually quite bad. But hey, this is live, right? And then a few days later, someone called me up and said, excuse my French, Jerry, we saw your TED talk. Awesome. We'd like to invite you to this other platform. And it's called, excuse my French, fuck up nights. And I, excuse me, is this a prank call? What kind of platform is called? Fuck up nights. And they said, no, no, this is real, this is real. And fuck up nights essentially is the opposite of TED Talk, where you don't go out on stage and gloat about your success. You do the opposite. You get up on stage to a reserved audience, total strangers, and you talk about all your inner 
was saying yes in public. And of course, Terry, the Mr. Say Yes to the World, says, yeah, no problem, I'll do it. And then three days before, they called me up and says, Terry, are you really sure? You're going to be sharing all your mistakes and your failures. So I said, never mind, I'll go. And I tell you, it was a catharsis to go on stage and share with the rest of the world all the horrible failures, be it your personal, be it your business failures. And guess what? Just as we discussed before, people came up to me, people hugged me, people said, Terry, that was so powerful because for once somebody gets up there and shares their failures. So again, back to all of you, authenticity is really key. Yeah? And that's part of the power of being infinite thinking. So I want to give this accolade to this group of people called the Malaysian Association of Professionals because everybody here, essentially that everything that you have done so far till today has been building up yourself. And guess who are the infinite thinkers? You guys, give yourselves a big hand, really. You couldn't be where you are today if you weren't infinite thinkers. And I will show, share a story later to show you exactly where it came from. That the fact that if we had that courage, that uncommon courage to step up and keep walking even though we are at the precipice and walk back even though there is no Japanese man who says, excuse me son, why are you doing it at the platform? Huh? Yeah? So it's inside us. How do we take that energy out? Yeah? That's so important. So here's a crazy idea. If I told you I was a nerdy geek, okay, I'm going to be very authentic, so I'm going to reveal the real Terry Gunny without the hat. Oh. Terry went topless! TJ, <laughs> <laughs> I love you because the whole concept of me taking out the hat is to be, with your permission, naked in front of the audience, uh, metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> debrief, 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 yes, absolutely. Debrouffed. <laughs> so now that I'm naked in front of the audience, I want to talk about me as a nerdy geek. Would you believe that I would build a trillion dollar mother of all car companies in the world? A nerdy geek that played with computers, did coding? That's impossible. That's the nerdy geek, it's not me. Mr. Elon Musk Musk. Yeah, he is a nerdy geek. But guess what? Did he think it was impossible to do the things that he did? Well, guess what? He is the infinite thinker extraordinaire. Why do you say that? Because his valuation of Tesla alone is one trillion dollars. You put the Mercedes Benz, the Toyota, the Honda, all the companies together, you cannot reach the valuation of one trillion. This one man has done it. Why? He has infinite thinking. He doesn't look at a problem in a zero sum game. Problem. Oh, let's look at the problem. Let's just solve that problem. No, it's what are the infinite possibilities that can come out of this. And that's infinite thinking. And that's why not only has he done a $1 trillion mother of all car companies, but he's done SpaceX, which then delivers, this is ultimate, right? A space version of Uber to take little payloads out into space. And guess what? He does it cheaper than the government, cheaper than NASA. How can you do that and still make money? How can you do that? Infinite thinking, because you don't stop at that single problem. It's not singular, yeah? Again, has he ever built rockets? He's a geek, remember? He's never built cars, never built rockets. So you can do literally anything if you put infinite thinking to your mind. Musk goes on to create other businesses, whether it's Hyperloop, whatever. Let's not talk about Twitter, it's a whole <laughs> different ballgame. <laughs> but there you go. Infinite thinking, yeah? Now, what are traits of infinite thinking? Because I think this is very important. All of us will have the traits, some of us will have more or less. Get the ones that you're missing and look at your peers. Some peers have more, fantastic. So one of them is they believe in something bigger than themselves. And this is very important. What Andrea Edwards said is now so beautiful. I sat there and resonated with me because she is looking at doing something bigger than herself. Yes, she's a public speaker. Yes, she's a trainer. But she's talking about this beautiful concept of serving humanity. Isn't that bigger than yourself? So someone says, yeah, but Terry, she's just a woman. How can she save the world? Yeah, 
that one woman has a voice. All of you have a voice, and all of you can use your voice to change the world, bit by bit, but it works. Yeah. If I was a 16-year-old dropout, by the way, yeah, you'll come to me. Yeah. I'm not a 16-year-old dropout, but quite close. Would you believe me if I told you I raised billions to clean up the great ocean garbage patch? For those people who are not in the know, there is a huge part of the Pacific Ocean that generates this garbage. It gets sucked in like, you know, an amazing sort of magic. And I bet you all of us have contributed to that garbage, even though we don't know it. And it's now three times the size of France. And it's growing and growing. It's been around for years. Has anybody done anything about it? We go to all the climate conference, we go to all these uh, wonderful Davos conversations, nada, nothing happens. And then, in comes this 16-year-old boy who says, excuse me, but it's my generation that's going to put up with this, excuse me, shit that you guys created? Why? Why is it me? Why is it my responsibility? And so he decided to do something about it. Very good looking guy, girls. Very good looking guy. Um, and he's from the Netherlands. And boy and slap, what he did was amazing. He is the ultimate youthful internet thinker because he didn't just look at that problem. He looked at a bigger problem. He started infinite thinking. Yeah? He has two barges that actually stop garbage from going into the sea. And guess where the two barges are put? Only two parts in the world. Indonesia and Klang River, Malaysia. So a lot of Malaysia said, wow, fantastic, we got the barge in our country. Excuse me, that's not an accolade. That means your river is the dirtiest in the world, together with Indonesia's dirtiest river. That is not an accolade. As a matter of fact, I challenge young people, let's figure out a way to stop those barges from working by making sure there's nothing to collect. That's infinite thinking, right? right. So this guy, again, he's 16. Dudes, how old are we all? I'm 61. This is the opposite of him. Yeah? He's 16 and he's done all this. And by the way, for those people who say, oh, I need this double degree, PhD, and blah, 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 the guy dropped out of aeronautical engineering school because he said, I can't wait. I need to do it now. So today, at 24, he's done what no global leader has ever done before. And that really is infinite thinking because he doesn't allow the problem to stop him. He goes to see beyond the problem. Find solution. And by the way, the solution is something that you guys see in swimming pools. You know, when you take your kids to the pool, there's this thing called the noodle, which is a bright colored sponge that you float around. Technically, that's what he did. But it's a giant version of it. Again, in for that thing. Yeah? Another trait which I love, they don't just embrace change, they be the change. Again, what Andrea talked about, how do you become the change? Guys, we are not us. We're not dumb. We're not mute. We have a voice, and our voice is so powerful. And when are we going to use it to the right cause? Pick your choice. There are so many causes you can speak for. Yeah, Andrea speaks about all the choices. You can do that too, right? These two lovely girls, they started their business as Infinite Thinking Sisters. They are the Virgin Sisters. Uh, they were born in Bali. They grew up in Bali. Jana, you want to go to Bali? Yeah, meet them, please. And so they grew up, those people in Bali, right? You've been to Kuta Beach and all those wonderful beaches. And of course, this is the famed tropical paradise island. And these two girls, remember, they were born there and they started swimming in the sea, of course, only over the years. They swam in plastic bag, more plastic bag. Excuse me, this is Paradise Island, best in the world, award-winning. Why are there plastic bags in the sea? And they said, whoa, 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 we can't do this. We can't have this. And so what these two girls did, they basically banded together. How old were they? 10 and 12. And what they did was they got their kids together and started cleaning the beach. And they kept doing it again, doing it again. Guess what? As adults, if you see a bunch of kids cleaning the beach, cleaning the surf, do you have any face just watching them do it? You don't. You will end up doing it with them. Because otherwise, as the Asians say, lose face, right? And this is the power of infinite thinking. When you set something in motion, everything starts to accelerate and things happen for you. Yeah? I'm not the guy who talks about the secret, but it's no secret. 
that you can do this all the time. All of us can do this all the time. And guess what? Today, they've become change agents. They're no longer 12, they're about 18, I think. And they've got done, done their TED Talks, they've gone around the world inspiring other kids to do amazing stuff. So, voice, action, authenticity, yeah? They have done one thing that nobody's done before, which is to convince a government, state government of Bali, to completely ban single-use plastic. You name me an adult in any part of the world that's done that. Nada. Why? Adults, you pay me a bit, then I close my eyes. They don't do that. Because this is the world that they are going to inherit. We are going to make all the money and we'll say, I'm out of here. You know, I'm 61, 10 years later I'm gone. But these guys are not. They're inheriting this world. So it's your children, it's your grandchildren. So what are you doing about it? Lend your voice. Yeah. Again, infinite thinkers, they embrace impermanence. What is impermanence? This is my take on permanence. About four months ago, I caught COVID. I had no idea where I got it from. Check my messenger truck. Nobody in my realm had COVID. So how did I get COVID? And it was not Omicron. It was something horrible. And I remember, for those of you who know, I live alone because my wife and my daughter are in the UK. And I'm in bed. And it was so painful. And I couldn't breathe. And I thought to myself, you know, I may not wake up tomorrow. And I said to myself, I think I should make sure my pajamas are decent. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thought that came to my mind. And who's got my keys? My 31 year old daughter and my neighbor, the lady who comes to water the plants when I'm around. Ooh, I don't really want them to catch me in a state of undress <laughs> in dead. And then the thought came to my mind Terry, if you die tomorrow, what have you got to account in life? What have you done? And for the first time, I like, took deep breath. I have four kids, one ex-wife, one current wife, one special needs son. And I said, I've done whatever I can as a human being. And every single moment of my life has been a joy, has been pain, has been moments like result that I wanted to also end my life. But I said to myself, no, it doesn't matter. 61, you knock out, it's okay. You live life. You know why? I felt that I touch enough <laughs> lives in my lifetime, and that's good enough for me. It's not about the multi-millions that we want to put in the account. No, it's about how many lives you change. And guess what profession you guys are in? You are in the profession of changing lives. I love it. Give yourself a big hand. It's just amazing that I'm speaking to this crowd. You know. Now, let's talk about somebody who believes in permanence. Okay, let's leave politics out of it, because there's nothing to do with politics. This is about a man who decides to accept an impermanence and how he can think infinitely. This is going to be scary. If I were a comedian and I told you that I could stand up against the world's largest nuclear armed nation, would you believe me? I'm a stand-up comic! I make everybody laugh! I'm an actor! I'm not a politician. I'm not some powerful leader. I don't even know I should have gone, for heaven's sakes. But who am I? Well, Vladimir Zelensky. He's real. He's not some figment of Terry Gunning's imagination. What does he do? He's the ultimate infinite thinker at large. Why? As I said, former comedian and actor. As a matter of fact, his acting career was pretending to be the president of Ukraine. <laughs> like, cool! Right? So, he was elected. Again, he didn't do any funny business. He actually got elected by people. And today, he has stood up against the Russian army, the Russian everything, with 6,000 over nuclear missiles and an army force of 3 million compared to your 1.5 million Ukrainians. What kind of crazy nut is that? This is somebody with infinite thinking because he doesn't see the problem as a problem. He sees the bigger picture. And the bigger picture allows you to see beyond the problem. Get past the problem. Whether he's going to survive or not, I don't know. But guess what? The US and NATO has invited him. Mr. Zelensky, we can airlift you out, take you to safety. He said, nada, I'm staying here. Why? Infinite thinkers inspire people. This is the beauty of infinite thinking. Who does he inspire? The Ukrainians. They will stand up and fight for their country. Die, die, I'm for my country. And he understands impermanence very well, just like 
me in my little bed, probably dying of COVID. This guy, he can get wiped out with a cruise missile hitting him wherever he is, just like that. And guess what? If you look at Putin's enemies, how many of them are alive? None. He's got a very good track record. I think no prisoners. Yeah? He knows this. He knows how powerful impermanence is, and he accepts it, and he leads with impermanence. That's awesome. Next, while it's thrilling to explore a finite possibility, which means you look at that zero-sum game, they know that exploring infinite possibilities is life-changing. This one, you guys got to Google this wonderful human being, wonderful soul. If I were a four-year-old US citizen, I didn't get it wrong, not 40-year-old, not 64, four-year-old, U.S. citizen, would you believe that I could change the lives of refugee children in Darfur, in Somalia, and Sudan? Four years old. Guess what? This is Riley Habit. She's a lovely girl. One day she was watching news with the parents, CNN, whatever, and they were covering the Darfur crisis where there was everything from refugees, uh, what do you call it, uh, these guys running away from a famine, and then she noticed that in the news program, this bunch of kids were in the refugee camp. And while they were playing with each other, they had one component that a four-year-old was very concerned about. They did not have toys. I mean, you and I, like, so what? But four-year-old, no, children must have toys, must have toys. So she ran away to her room and dragged out this box. In this box were her old toys. And she said, mommy, daddy, I don't need these toys anymore. Can I send this from USA to Somalia? The parents are like, uh, you see, the adult mind starts to be non-infinite thinking. Oh, it's a bit difficult because you know we don't have any cultural relations or with uh, Somalia. The great cost is going to be very expensive. Um, you know, the governance is not going to work, so it's not going to be done. That's the thinking of human adult minds because we've been corrupted and polluted with our experiences that are negative. Four year old girl, mommy, I want to send this there. End of story. Guess what? Are you going to refuse a four year old girl? They took the box, they went to school, and then they got all the other kids. Would you like to donate this? Because Riley is going to send this whole box and we're going to arrange. And everybody started donating. Today, age four, I mean, she's now older, but she started Riley's Toy Foundation, which delivers toys to African children in Darfur and other displaced countries around the world. How old is she? Four. And the foundation has been adopted by World Vision International. Infinite thinking. Yeah, I've got a small little foundation. And then a big foundation like World Vision International. Like, ooh, I like that kid's birth. I like that kid's gravity. Let's stick her on. Boom. Imagine how powerful this is. World Vision International, Google them. They're huge. They're like the United Nations, yeah? So, what are the barriers to infinite thinking? This is, you know, typical human beings. And drown out the naysayers. Who are the naysayers? Well, life is a life of chance, yeah? So, the finite thinkers are the naysayers. Finite thinkers believe in this thing called zero-sum game. I win, you lose. There's no such thing as win-win. Infinite thinkers think about win-win. And that brings back to what I do. I'm a provocateur, I'm an advocate for something called conscious capitalism. Conscious capitalism means you can run companies very powerfully and make profits, but make sure that every single stakeholder comes along with you. You do not leave anybody behind. Very much like Bharat, my good friend, who believes in bringing humanity back into business. We both speak from the same Bible. <laughs> so to speak. And it's very important for us to understand that you can prove to your corporate leaders it can be done because it's been done by thousands of companies. It's not a pie in the sky. A lot of CEOs and CS, um, CFOs will say, Terry, all this feel good, nice kind of business, uh, make everybody happy, is very utopian, uh, cannot make money. And I proved to them time and time again, showing them real life companies who are listed on NASDAQ and they make billions of dollars, yet they serve every single stakeholder. Infinite thinking. So it's a mindset problem when people say, oh, Terry, Tabulela, this is what I cannot do. That's your mindset. These people, the CEOs who started the companies, 
all read it. And it's not something they did yesterday. They've done this for years. Proven it. Yeah. So, guess what? Uh, Bharat, you were the one who asked about, think of a defining moment for all of us. This is one of my defining moments. Essentially, you will amount to nothing. How many of you have had these words thrown at you? I was a kid, yeah, there you go, and you know, I had these words thrown at me. Why? For those of you who don't know Terry Gunny, I'm born of mixed parentage. I grew up speaking English because my father was an Anglophile. I grew up in Brunei, part of Penang, and my bahasa was so bad. I'm embarrassed to even call myself Malay because, you know, 25% of my DNA is Malay, and I just cannot speak Bahasa to save my life. And guess what? Those words were thrown at me, and the only people who saved me, I will share with you in a moment. Would you believe it? I had A's in everything, but my Bahasa Malaysia, I had an F9, the wonderful <coughs> F9, which means you fail the whole Malaysian certificate of education. Nada, zero, doesn't matter if you got your double A's or everything else. You fail your Bahasa means you fail, full stop. Yeah, unlike uh, Nigesh, you too retook it, right? I didn't, because my parents said, don't worry, Terry, failing your MC is not the end of the world. Go out and seek your fortune, find something you're passionate about, find something that serves humanity, find something that you resonate with, and everything will fall in place. And God bless my parents, they've been amazing. Really, really wonderful. <laughs> Drown up the biggest naysayer. Who's the biggest naysayer? Your father? Your mother? The kids? Beautiful. I love this audience. You're awake. <laughs> so, we are the biggest naysayer. And guess what? I'm going to show you this really personal experience of mine that's so personal. It's called the What's Your Name? Remember, I have a mixed parentage. Everybody calls me Terry. The name Terry was given to me by my parents when I was born. But because we're Malays and then slash Muslims, I was given a Malay slash Muslim name of which I don't use. If anybody calls me by my real IC name, or it's either the police or the income tax. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh, friend, and you in a row, right? So, here we go. This is the famous Toon Mahathir story, which I've often repeated, but it's a sweet story. I was working as a very young man with no degree, just no MC either, and I was given opportunities by amazing people who hired me because they believed in me. So anyway, I was working for this company called Person Must Teller, and this is 1993. And essentially, this company was the leading PR company in the world. They shape messages and they communicate messages. They eventually became lobbyists and all that. But because I was a token Bumiputra in Malay in the company, and the rest of them were Americans and whatever, they said, Terry, we've got Ananda Krishnan, the billionaire, as a client, you know, AK. And I'm like, whoa, I don't even know who he is. <laughs> and then, of course, my job was to present this launch of the Petronas Twin Towers project. There was nothing there except a race course, you know, a horse riding race course. And we were going to build this Twin Towers. And it was AK's idea. And of course, guess who is volunteered, volunteered to present to Tun Dr. Mahathir, who happened to be the Prime Minister of Malaysia then, and he was really, really the man. And so, I'm a 24-year-old guy. <laughs> I, number one, built my bahasa, <laughs> and I'm going on stage to present to the most powerful man in the country. No big deal. No pressure. And then I presented, and when I started presenting in bahasa, the old man looked like this. <laughs> I kid you not. This is his face. And you know him, right? So he stares at me. And, you know, I'm skimping ball like this. What's your name again? Terry Gunny? Is that your real name? Well, it's given to me, but I have a Malay name, it's Ramli. I like you! <laughs> Why, sir, do you like me? I like you, because there are millions of Ramli Ghanis in the world. I bet you there's only one Terry Gunny. Keep that name, that's your brand. Live your brand. <gasps> <laughs> wow! And then, this is the one that kills you. So please continue the presentation. But please do it in English. Because your, <laughs> your bahasa sucks. It hurts my ear. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. There you go. You see? 
any further thinking, if you think that that would have killed me, my infinite thinking process started kicking in. Guess what? Later on, years later, I became a consultant with Bursa Master and my own agency. And when we did projects, guess who wrote Dr. Mahathir's speech? What? Isn't that an incredible, iconic, ironic story? And it's real. And at first, when I sent it in, I was being a great naive guy, like, you know, the press secretary is going to change this and change that. Like, remember the video you showed us of NASA? That they would do that. That's so why I could relate to the video. But guess what? They didn't. They actually put it verbatim, everything to the words. Why? Because you resonate with the audience. You knew what the audience needed. And that's what you guys do, and you're good at that. I got two minutes, quickly. Drown out doubts. This is very important. You know, often heard Adidas, right? Impossible is nothing, nothing is impossible. Those are just words. But when you live a life like someone like me, and I'm sure lots of you resonate, um, yes, she's just walking out, no, you resonate with this. How can one save broken families? Everybody's got the mindset that if you go through a divorce, your life is dead. Yeah? You will never stand up again, you will never be proud. Well, I believe the other way around, that broken marriages are not to be looked at negatively, that you don't necessarily destroy lives. This is my real family. That's my ex-wife with the glasses in the middle. That's my special needs son, who's now 28. Um, over there with the glasses, um, who looks like the mother, is my oldest son. He works at Netflix and his wife, my youngest daughter. And essentially, that's me and I remarried after many years of being single. My wife and my current ex-wife can go out for meals together. Why? Because I'm able to put my ego aside to then allow them to live this thing called unconditional love. All of us can do this. All of us have the capacity to do it. It's a matter of whether we can put our ego aside just for momentarily and then move forward to be the fantastic person we all are. Okay? And last one. Who can save the world? I started something called Humanity Inc. Foundation. Why? Because my special needs son made me realize that all of us have the capacity. He made me damaged in the brain, but does that stop me from loving him? It doesn't. As a matter of fact, I, were, I was in positions where I said, I hate you because he's not autistic. He has very serious damage in the brain where he could take a knife to you or to me or to his mother. And yet we still had to live with this. I could see the potential of him killing my other marriage, even though the other one is not being reconciled. So the point is, how do we get past this infinite thinking? So I started Humanity Foundation, which basically hopes to bring the humane back to humanity in every sense of the word. All of us have the capacity to go out and speak, bring the humane back to humanity. So I'm going to leave you with this line. If you see everything that has happened to you, be they joyous or painful, as a miracle of learning, then you are on your path to infinite thinking. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. I'm just going to go in the vein of Tun Mahadir and say you are terribly good, you are terribly exciting, and you're terribly infinite. Uh, tell, tell Tun I've used the name three times over more than he has. So remember me 10 years, 20 years from now. <laughs> Guys, wanna, I, that was really good. Thank you so much. You don't have to drop your